Blog Talk Radio. You've got two new messages. First message. Message received last Friday at 4.15 p.m. Saturday, you are tuned in to another episode of Indie Fire. Wow. That right there was Stitch. If you tuned in on Thursday the 13th, you got the opportunity to listen live to Stitch um, out of Raleigh, North Carolina with that track right there, 2 a.m., along with some new music that he just dropped. I thought it would be appropriate just to soften the mood and start with that. If you listen to him talk about 2 a.m., 
He said very, very briefly that, you know, when I think of 2 a.m., I don't think, you know, I don't know about anybody else, but when I think of 2 a.m., that's that bewitching hour. And I think he kind of used the same term. Um, you know, that's that, that, that hour of the morning where you're laying in bed and all these thoughts are running through your head, like, you know, should I text him or her? Um, should I respond to that previous text they sent me? Should I put my clothes on and just show up? You know what I'm saying? Shit happens at 2 a.m. <laughs> that track right there, when you listen to it, I mean, and, and you know, he's a lot younger than I am, but I was like, you know, I don't know if your 2 a.m. really means the same as my 2 a.m., but, you know, from 2 to, like, 6 a.m., all of those thoughts, you know, I'm always, like, wide awake thinking, you know, yeah, should I call him? Should I text him? Like, should I just hit the highway? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that was it to 2 a.m., Ah, we are here with our anti-Valentine's Day show, and I've had so many questions asked throughout the week. Like, apparently these are people who really don't know me, because you would know (laughs) that I don't celebrate Valentine's Day, and you would know that I always respond with, you know, Happy Single Awareness Day or Happy Anti-Valentine's Day or whatever. And I understand, you know, the whole concept of behind Valentine's Day. And I know all about, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be about um, your significant other showing love to you on that day or, or special, you know, more special love or, you know, the buying of the gifts on that day. But, you know, you could show love to your family members or, you know, to your kids or to your coworkers or whatever. Um, nevertheless, I feel about the day the same way I feel about Thanksgiving. You know what I'm saying? Why you got to have one day after year to just meet up with everybody and just eat and be thankful when you can do that shit all year long? So, People said today was side chick and side nigga Saturday. Nah, mm-mm. This, what this was, this gave you the opportunity to go to those stores while they got stuff at 50% off and buy up everything that you can. And people like me did that. You buy up everything minus that candy because I don't want to give nobody stale candy. And then they have, like, you know, some food poisoning because of me. You know what I'm saying? But you buy up all this other stuff. You buy up cards. You buy up some animals. You know what I'm saying? You buy up all the, the decorations. And you make those moments last throughout the entire year, you know, because it's random as hell to get a happy Valentine's Day card in freaking September. You know what I mean? But you're supposed to be able to share this love or show this love all throughout the year, not just this one day. And that's how I feel. Not to mention, you know what I mean? If you really, really know me, you know I I really don't like love anyway. So (laughs) I don't know how how Suzy is. Um when it comes to the topic of love, but we're going to definitely touch upon a lot of different subjects tonight. I've had people throw questions at me all week, like talk about this and ask this and, and what would your response be to this? So instead of me answering them one-on-one, like I'm their therapist, I'm going to bounce these questions around with Susie and we're going to talk about these questions um, tonight. All right. If you're listening live, feel free to call, call in. Yes, I've been sipping. 929-477-1320 right here on Indie Fire. The links are out if you just want to tune in and listen um, online. But, again, I'm live with my co-host this evening, Susie. Are we going by last names or not? This is Susie from Sage and Sexy Radio is live with me tonight in the studio. Yes, and we're ready. We're ready. Susie, I don't know if you had the opportunity <laughs> to um, – Look at my page today, but I posted several articles, and I, I didn't tag you in them, but um, one of those articles, I, I want to start off talking about that because it's something that you see um, a lot of women going through, and I'm talking about body shaming and body positivity. You, you um, identify that, or most people can identify that, you know, as something that centers around women. We always see women talking about, you know, the body positivity movement and, you know, feeling shamed about their body and always trying to contour their body or add to their body. Um, But we don't really see the men talking about that or supporting the movement openly, right? So Mm -hmm. last weekend started New York Fashion Week, and it ended on Thursday night. And so... um, on the runway, on the very last night, 15-plus um, size men, they took over the runway at New York Fashion Week, um, flaunting body positivity. They walked the runway in their underwear, stomach exposed in many cases. Um, the message is that men have curved too. <laughs> All 
right? So I have a, I have a friend who made a comment. He saw the article, and he made a comment. You know, he was like, yes, I'm all for that, but I'll never be that comfortable. And the funny thing is I met him years ago um, when my event management company first started, and we were looking for plus-size male models to um, – to put on, I don't want to say put on display, but we needed to um, be able to show, you know, men in tuxedos, men dressed up who were all sizes. But you very rarely saw plus size men dressed up, all right? You saw them in, you know, like wet, um, like khakis or whatever, those nasty looking plaid shirts. You saw them in stuff like that, but you didn't see them in print you know, dressed up, ready, to, like they didn't go to social events and shit, you know? So I started approaching men, like, you know, plus size men, like, hey, you know, um, if you have pictures, you know, can we use them? Can we, you know, we just want to be able to da 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 So he was all for it, you know, that was, that was, that was huge for him, for somebody to, you know, ask him that. Well, now he's just like, you know, he's a little older. He's probably been like seven, eight years ago. He's a little older now, and he's like, you know, I'm all for it, but I don't feel like this is something I can do or that I would ever be able to do. All right, so two, two-part question here. How do you feel about men who are, you know, supportive of women who are with the body positivity movement and against, of course, body shaming? Secondly, how do you feel about these men out on the runway just out there, you know, in their underwear? I'm sure they wasn't in, like, bikinis or whatever, you know. <laughs> but, um, but I'm well, still saying they, uh, they are confident and comfortable. My response to him was you have to get in a place where you're comfortable, where you're content, where you're confident. And where you just pretty much say, you know, to hell with what other people think and say. You know, so one of those C's you're missing. You know, you may be comfortable. I'm a big boy. I'm good with it. You know what I'm saying? But you're missing you're missing something else, all right? So how do you feel about, one, the men who are supportive of the body, the body positivity movement? who support it, and then, two, those men with that much confidence to actually risk the runway, you know, with nothing on, you know, saying, hey, um, and I think it goes it goes further than that, you know, like, um, we don't want to be shamed because of our size, you know, and and it's, it's, I'm all, I'm going to link this up to the word love, you know, because a lot of women go through that, you know, they're shamed about their body because they've been torn down. I know I'm going to get back to you in a minute. They're torn down because of their size. Um, they're mentally and verbally, you know, abused because of their size. Um, so, and and, it, and a lot of men go through this as well. We don't know about it because it's always pushed up under, you know, we just assume that's a big boy and he's good with it. And so it's just pushed up under the rug. But when you have these men who are showing you, you know, hey, here I am, this is me and all of my glory, you know, take me for who I am. All right, I'm going to shut up. How you feel about all that? Um, well, um, first of all, I did see the article. I was trying to edit my focus now because me and multitasking just don't work too well these days. So I did see the post about um the body shaming movement. I did see that article on your page and I was like, it made me go into a whole nother tangent. Don't get me started. We'll get there in a minute. But to answer your question, as far as what do I think about the men that are supporting? Oh, it's free to be in the skin that you're in. Awesome. Great. Love it. However, comma. We got some youngins that's following up behind the foolishness. I just can't help but to just put that in there because it just goes beyond an adult embracing their full body. But my thing is, as adults, how do we, and for those that know how to, Put um, put a disclaimer or an emphasis on your stresses of your confidence for the younger generation that's watching you, because 
they are here doing something absolutely foolishness. I mean, I can't, I can't deal with it. As adults, we can support one another, get it, got it, good. But when it comes to these youngins and how they present themselves, it's, there's a time, place, and age. Yes, I'm gonna say that for everything. We might agree, right? We might disagree right there, but there's a time, place, and age for everything. So it's kind of spilling over in a whole nother way that I'm not liking to be for one. But as far as the men that are supporting the movement itself, um, in good taste, because I just this, this is where I stand. I applaud them on that. I'm not too keen on. I mean, if I see a big girl, I ain't gonna lie or do, but definitely a girl because I'm a female. I'm a, I'm a girl too. So, you know, I see one uh, female that's the, like, I don't get, I'm like, hell, I'm up here tripping on this um pudge that I got going on in my midsection and this extra wiggliness going on in my thighs, and she got it all out. Hell, I might as well, but I know me. I'm confident in my skin by all means, but what I ain't going to do is that. So it's for some people and for some it's not. As far as the um, big guys, the oversized men with the, all the extra love to give because they just chunky like that. Chunky monkey. That's one of my words, my bad. But <laughs> I, <laughs> I, for one, I think that's like, I think, I believe I respond to a, a heavy set man the same way I respond to a medium sized one. Like for real. I mean, if you know, if he's all exposed and whatnot, and his junk ain't what you know, I'm then we I'm gonna overlook that and be like, you working it? Go on, do that. I ain't gonna be like, yeah, I wanna lay down with you. Just saying, but you work it. Go on and do that. You know, because that's how Valentine's. You know, there's no V, there's no D. We are gonna leave all that out. And that's just where I stand with the whole body image movement. Yay, in the skin you're in. One thing, another thing that I wanna add too is that. I was noticing, I've been noticing like the last maybe week or so, and I know it's been going on longer than that. Like there are, we are definitely, and I say we as, I want to say women, because that's what I can see. Everybody's timeline is different. Thank God for that. Um, But for the women that I can see is we are, and I am one of them. I'm quick to share a picture of anyone that's, you know, done took, you know, uh, that has taken pictures, you know, Nisha and, um, Oh, we hashtag empower her, Monique Burks. Thank you, Lord have mercy. So I'm quick to share pictures of other women that I see, and the guest that was on your show last week, she was it was full body. So I'm quick to show, you know, show things, um, show or share things of that nature to be in support of, and that's just the class of it. Now I I seen the Lizzo pic, I did, because I'm pretty sure somebody's thinking about that right now. I saw that. I, it, that that's not something I'm gonna share. I mean, bless her and, that, and all her goodness and whatever she got going on and everything else after that. But no, nah, mm, mm, mm. I mean, some people support it. I for one, I'm that mm, in in good taste in class. I will, but no, I ain't got no wine. Hmm. So. Hmm. Hmm. Um, that picture yeah. and that 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 one picture in particular, I'm not. And maybe if it would have been at the club, I wouldn't have really cared. Um, if it had it been any place else, it wouldn't have been as big of a deal to me. Um, right. But because it was a place that, you know, children are at, your ass is all on live TV, you know what I mean? That I think that mm-hmm. was the, the thing that most people, you know, um, it affected most people the most. Right, but I don't want to talk about Lizzo. All right, the love of music. And I'm gonna leave it at that right that there. That was just where I was. Right, yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that right there. Um, bringing awareness to, um, or being able to bring awareness to boys and young men who may experience depression, um, anxiety from from body shaming was another reason that these men felt that they needed to step on the runway. How important do you feel that men's mental health is to you? Whether it be your man, man, whether it be the man that you're trying to get, whether it be your uncle, whether it be your brother, how important is the the mental health of men? Not just men um, in particular, 
Um, just right. that, because that's so, that's so, I want to get very specific. The mental health of black men. Okay. Um, uh, it's extremely important. Of course, we, we know that it's important. We know it's extremely important, but how do we, um, I don't want to say tackle it, live with it, deal with it, address it. You know what I mean? Because from, okay. I come from a single family, a single parent home. Right. And so with that being said, my mom did everything and all that she could as my mom as both parents because she had to fill in the role of my dad. she has been absent for a very long time. However, that also not only the, the same toll it takes a it takes a it takes an even harder toll on a man if their father isn't in the house as it is. So mental awareness, hello one oh one starts at home because that's where it begins. Whether and in some cases the father can be there, and it's like he might as well not even be there for whatever reason, X, Y, and Z. You know, you'd have to ask the son or the nephew or the uncle or the brother about that. Um, I do believe, and I know for sure, like I said, it's the mental, aware, uh, mental health awareness of the black man is definitely important. They face many more struggles in the moment they walk out their door, let alone when they get home, but they face many more struggles and stresses, I should say, when they, when the, more, the minute they step out their door, not only in their job, not just in traffic, but because of the color of their skin. And um, this is not about the race card, but it's about the race card. I, mean, I believe we got the right to at least say that much during February. I'm just saying. So anyhow, it's extremely important to the extent of we, ooh, because I'm going to piss some people off, we as black women must find a medium in understanding our black men and their mental health issues, you know what I'm saying, their, their mental stresses. You have, we have to, we have that responsibility. It is our obligation, I'm just saying, as a black woman, to figure out and or just, you ain't got to be the whole weight bearer of whatever it is that they are going through and their mental stresses, but you got to find a medium and pull back on some of your crazy, because I know I got some floating in me. I'm just, that is on air and on record. I'm just saying, we all have our out, our, our outs or inches or pounds or what the hell ever. You just got to find a way to be like, hey, let me pull back on, you know, my my emotions and how I'm feeling. And another thing, pull back, pull back, because he don't want to hear that. He got way too much going on and you doing this extra and the other. I just, I can't. I can't with you. Oh, wait a, minute, that, wait, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. I know you one of them. I can't. Check your phone. I can't. Check your phone. Come Check on. your phone. Check your phone. <laughs> Wait um, a minute. I'm a, I gotta I'm get in it. You. I'm gonna pause you on that right there. All right. Go ahead. If we talking about we if we talking about um because I'm I'm gonna come up with my response to to that right there. I because I I always say that you know your mental health affects my mental health. All right. If your right. ass ain't in the right state of mind this morning, then it's gonna mess up my whole day. All right. I'm going right. to at least try to do everything in my power to make things better for you before you step out that door. Um, because I feel like that's my job as, you know, your woman, I'm, I'm going to do everything within me. And if I can't, you may need to stay home from work today. We need to resolve this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But right. where I, I, I have a problem with that, with what you said is, you know what, when you're the type of woman that I am, when you give all that you can give to somebody you know, you talk about their mental health and what they have to go through out in society and the fact that they're black and the fact that they're men just in general, those two right there knock them out just because, you know what I'm saying? Then, you know, um, right. the economic status, so you got socioeconomic statuses, they may just, you right. know, just them three just knock them all out, you know, combined together. And I get it. I understand all of that. But when I, when you haven't taken the time to look at the weight of the world that is upon my shoulders, you know what I'm saying? And I'm still stepping up to make sure that I'm providing strength for you and nurturing you and empowering you and supporting you. But I'm pretty much getting, you know, the weak side of you. Like, that's, that's where I have a problem with. If you talk about balance, then there needs to be balance all the way around. We balance the bills. Absolutely. You know what I mean? 
we we balance who gonna buy the groceries. We balance in, you know, who gonna de-stress me today, and I'm gonna de-stress you tomorrow. And you know, we balance in who gonna take care of the kids. Right. You know, who who do the homework? Who do the dishes? For? We balance in everything. We can't just pick and choose what's gonna be balanced when it comes to mental health. Like today is an off day for Nakia, so I'm gonna just leave. I'm gonna let you right. be. Go with your girlfriends. You know what I'm saying? You know, go deal with your girlfriend. That's why Nakia runs solo. Because the nigga ain't ever going to tell Nakia, go run with your girlfriend. I ain't got him. You know what? I'm here. So my man <laughs> to pour into me just like I pour into him. So on, on that right there, you know, because you know me. Because we talk every day. You know right. what <laughs> kind of men I deal with. You know what I'm saying? It's quick for me to shut a nigga down. Just sh- I'm done with you. You know what I'm saying? And And it's taken me a long time. To get to where I am, cause my resume is long. I I can present, you know, like a 17 page resume. If you need that, my resume is long. I've been through some shit with men, but I'm to the point now where I've learned that some, you know, that little saying, you know, sometimes you got to sit back and do self evaluation. Sometimes it is right. you. I've done that. I reevaluated. Yeah. I've evaluated. I've had psychiatrists, psychologists to evaluate, and re- it ain't all Nakia. Trust and believe. Right. I right. I don't dissected men. I know it's not all in the Kia. So I just feel like that that right there is important to me off top. I, I want to know if your ass is crazy. I want to know because that's some place that we can balance each other because we both crazy. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you, which yeah. brings me to my um my next subject, question, topic. Um, if you're going through things, if you're going through depression. Don't keep that shit bottled in. Talk about it. We need to talk about it. You know, people say that communication is like key in relationships, and I don't believe that. I believe that comprehension Jeez. is key because you can talk oh. and talk and talk and talk all you want to, but if that other person ain't comprehended a damn thing you said, that was you in one ear and out the other. You wasted all that wind. You know what I'm saying? All those hand movements. You wasted all of that time, <laughs> and and nobody grasped anything. So the person needs to be able to comprehend. But if they're at their lowest point today, they ain't feeling where you coming from. They ain't right. hearing where you. They definitely not trying to hear where you coming from. You <laughs> have to be able to comprehend some things, and sometimes silence is key as well. Steady a person. Study a man, study mm-hmm. a woman. You know those triggers. You know things that's going to put them in places like being depressed. And, again, which brings me to my, my next <laughs> question. Why do men think that expressing your feminine side, um, showing your emotions, or admitting that you need help, why do they think that's a sign of weakness or either you gay? But why, why do they think, you know, this nigga a punk, you know what I'm saying? He's sitting over there in the corner crying, you know. He talking about going to therapy, you know. He done popped some pills. Why do people think that that just shows a sign of, of weakness? And then when well, a person is dead because they committed suicide, then right. you would be hollering, oh, my gosh, like I never knew that was going on when all the signs were there. But you just pushed them under the right. rug because... You know, mm-hmm. again, you, you expect men to you be... You was having a bad day. Right. That's it. You know? <laughs> and you expect the men to be um, these these powerful these figures that, that nothing, you know, no strong wind's going to knock them down. You know, they're our protectors, right. our providers. You know, nothing can ever happen to them. But then when something does tragically happen, you didn't see mm-hmm. the sign. So, so why do right. people think that equates to being weak? If you... If you need help, or if you express your thoughts, well, you just mentioned strong wind, and I had to hold on to that because my memory is shot to hell. You just mentioned strong yeah. wind, right? Like <laughs> no strong wind can come knock them down. Well, the strongest wind that mm-hmm. knock any man down is a woman just cutting him off at the damn knees, if not at the balls. Let's just call it what it is, because he can be having <sighs> a terrible, absolute garbage type of day, but because. I'm going to step into Nakia's world for a minute. Nakia and Susie, how we do on our one and one because we may be having one of our own days and ain't got time for all of the other, then, okay, we don't even know. But that has severed him. 
but we got to deal with our mental issues. We got to deal with our own stresses. And and I, I say that we as in individually, me as a woman, you as a woman, him as a man. You know what I mean? So we do have yeah. to know how to deal with our own mental stresses. But at the same time, and this is something that I was telling somebody last week, we as women, going back to this Susie and the Kill world thing, <laughs> we as women have to find a balance within ourselves constantly. That's not an easy thing to do. I, it stresses me out sometimes. Not stressing me out, but it'll almost borderline teeter totter get me slightly depressed. I ain't gonna lie. Um, for one, I, I can't go outside in the daytime. It annoys me. Like my, I, I can't. The sun Ooh, too much. I can't do it. I know. So I know. Right. So with that being said, you know what I mean. You have to find, and I said that to say this, because you have to find a balance. Because I'm in the house, I may want to call up my friend and bother him all day long, but you know, I just. I can't because that's intrusive. I have to find, I have to identify the boundaries that I need to set for myself so that I am not being intrusive on someone else's boundaries. And you, that is important to mental health all the way around, yours, mine, his, them, shims, and whoever else's. It's important. Boundaries are important. You have to realize as well that there are times when we ourselves, especially as women, because we have this tendency to do it and men don't realize that we do it or maybe some do or whatever, but here's a kid I'm telling game right now so somebody better listen. We have the tendency as women to relinquish power to a man that he don't even know he damn got and we the ones with the attitude yeah. for no yeah. reason. And then he's like, I don't even know why you acting like that. This is so, what's wrong with you? And you're like, what you mean? What's wrong with me? How you get it? Hey, 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 calm down. That's energy you gave him. He didn't even know he had. Pull back. Grab it. Put it in the box. You hold on to that. And when y'all get to that level, space, time, place, or whatever, then you shed a little bit of that energy with him. But don't give him all that because he don't know he got it. How you going to give energy and power to a dummy? I'm not going to say a dummy. But how you going to give energy and power? Because <laughs> I was thinking about Trump for a second. I'm sorry, y'all. How you going to give energy and power to someone that don't know how to handle that energy and power that you've given them, let alone the fact that they don't even know they got it? You know what I mean? And then now you sitting here with all lump face and feeling some type of way because everybody else getting loved on and you ain't. Sit down. Stop like that. <laughs> I wish I'd never met you I would never left you Your body gets an A plus I don't need to test you I just want to bless you Hold you and caress you Your secrets, yeah, they safe with me I'm nothing what the press do Treat you like a woman I ain't fronting like the rest do Leave you happy every hour Drink you on special I don't, don't want to stress you Let me undress you Keep you on the right path Let me direct you Yeah, we shooting forward, baby Something like a tech dude Weigh out all options Let me pyrex you Y'all yeah, ain't nothing like the next dude I got many choices But I select but I you select you No, I can't not one day I can't go one day No, I can't not one day I just want to live right Every day I give light You see, I'm a stand up guy But baby, sit tight Cause we might be the center of attention D-White, take off like rockets Ain't no crumbs on the table D-Nice, I don't want to wreck you Let me protect you Show you off to everybody Let me project you You sweeter than the pie, girl Higher than the sky, girl First name ain't Wayne But I'ma make you my world, I know you think it's insane on how I make your toes curl, both was born sinners, light a J, cold world, my love for you, it ain't no mystery, let's change matters physically, we got that chemistry, no I can't not one day, I can't go one day, no I can't not one day, I can't not one day. I can't go one day. No, I can't not one day. Uh, that was way on with 
sunshine. You can follow him on IG. I'm jamming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, when do we have Way Out One? The birthday. He was on the birthday show. And he sent that track in. So I've been sitting on that since the birthday show. And she was like, that'll be perfect for your Valentine's show. So, yes, you can follow him on IG at The Real Way On. I think that's it. W-A-Y-O-N. I'm going to have to go look it up. I'm going to give you everybody's IG at the end of the show. All right? But, yeah, that's Way On with Sunshine. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Um, no, no, I didn't know I was working on my bad. My bad, y'all. My bad. It feel good out there. I can't help it. Get out the breeze, man. It's blowing. I so Is it I've the trees? That. Am I breaking up now? Okay. Yeah. I've heard that brown. I've heard brown and black, brown, black, you know, brown and black love described as passion, empathy, strength, resilience, unique, a fine balance of showing up and yielding space and a powerful force of uniting, blessing, and positively impacting the world. What is black love to you? I got issues. Oh, you want me to answer? You want me to answer that one first? No. You ain't, you gonna, you, no, no, no. I'm going to answer it. You still going to get your answer. Because I promise you, <laughs> <laughs> this whole black love thing just hit me like right. a year and a half ago. I was like, what the hell? What is, huh? What's going on? This is yeah. like yeah, we're gonna right. call it that. Right. I can't stand it. Right. Oh my god! So uh, yeah, I mean, black love to me is it's a trend because <laughs> that's all I got. It's a trend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know that's all I got. I so for me, black love, and I know you know. I don't know if it's a term that's only a term of endearment or whatever that's only used in the States. But I know like in Europe, you mentioned black love. It's starting to spread. They understand what it means. But if you just walk up to a black couple and be like, hey, what's black love? It's just not used there, all right? Because some of my, what I heard came from um, couples in Europe. So it's something that they, they don't, you know, they don't, it's not, they don't have a term for it. You know what I'm saying? So, because right. one person actually did ask, is there a white love? No, nah, exactly. You know, right, right. But for me, from the outside looking in, I think black love could possibly be peace. <laughs> um, yeah. It could be desire. It could be knowledge. It could be untapped potential. It could be wealth. And it could be happiness. But if we being realistic and we're speaking from Nikia's point of view, black love is not for me. I'll pass. But I've been there, done that. Um, and everything does not t-shirt. go better with wine. You know how they say everything goes better with wine? No, everything does not, not go love. better with wine. So that's how I that's how I define black love. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> it's not well, for me. So I'll it pass. Is. Not for her. And there's She'll pass. Matter. And everything does not go better with one. Mm-hmm. Now, I have a Facebook friend who posted this earlier this week. Now, I think you probably remember me, remember me talking about her. She had this post early this year. And maybe it was the end of last year. Because I think she was out because I don't want to. But maybe she was on a January. I don't want to give too much information because I'll tell who she is. But um, she had the post about, yes, it was last year. In 2020, we were marrying people first and, and getting to know them later, right? Remember remember that post? Let me yeah. tell you about that. All right. So when I had on the show, you know, she broke it down. She explained. And I didn't knock what she was saying because I feel like, you know, life is too short. So and people, that's something people say all the time. So why spend 10 years? Being engaged, you know, getting to know somebody, then going through this long engagement until all of a sudden you finally get married and, like, he dies the next day. You know what I'm saying? If if it clicks instantly, then do what you do and, and let love find, find you later. I'm all for that. Maybe I'm that person. Maybe that's maybe when I see this man and I be like, yo, you know what? We're just going to do this. We're just gonna, as soon as you get divorced, we're going to go ahead and get married. And then... um. 
we'll fall in love later. You know what I mean? That that's what we gonna do. I can't. Mm mm. Yeah. We so, ain't doing that. I can't. So, so, so she had this post. I can't. She had this post earlier this week, like Sunday, right? And yeah. the, this, and I'm, I'm quoting word for word. I right? it says, I'm ready okay. for interracial dating. I've been loyal to broken black men, and they don't want anything wow. long term because they refuse wow. to heal. The generational wow. trauma is making me run from black men, I swear. And you wow. know, I just sat back and read like two hours worth of comments. Ain't nobody commenting on the <coughs> stuff as much as they comment on this right here. Um, wow. And, and a part of me wow, applauded her. That's I deep. think I might have before. I think that's what I, I think I gave her a thumbs up. Like this. Or, I, I applauded, <laughs> or I applauded her. Because, you know, for me, um, the part where she says broken black men, she's been loyal to broken black men, and and they don't want anything because they they refuse to heal. And she wow. talked about on the show when she was here, generational trauma, and that's something, she's a life coach as well. Um, she has, you know, several degrees. Um, she's a master's in either sociology or psychology. She works with people one-on-one, you know, daily, dealing with things like, generational <clears throat> trauma okay so we're talking right. about somebody who's licensed to speak on what she's talking about you're not just talking off the side right. of her neck you know she's right. licensed to speak on these things even though it may come off the wrong way you know but i understand and, and it all goes back to not being able to heal and how it affects your mental health how you know what not being able to heal affects everything Mind, right, body, it soul, it will tear your body down. Do you hear me? Right. When you hold on to shit, it'll tear your body down. It will. Okay? It'll make your ass crazier than what your ass is crazy ass. Okay? I'm trying to tell you. And so, but I feel where she's coming from in a, in, in, in a small way, you know, um, <clears throat> when you've just given so much to ensure that the person you with is, you know, like I said, you pour so much into the person and into the relationship and, you know, and, but you start to see a trend, you know, because, because people aren't, they don't want to talk about issues that bother them. You know, they don't right. want to talk about past hurts and, you know, things like that. They don't, they don't, they bottle all this stuff in. Ain't no telling what you over there telling your homeboy. He may know it all. You know what I'm saying? He right, might have experienced right. some of this shit with you. But the right. person that you should be, you know, sharing this stuff with so that you can get past this stuff, so that you can build with this individual, you know, you're not, and I, I get it. I understand where she's coming from. But what makes you think it's going to be any better um, and, and, you know, when people, when they hear <clears throat> interracial dating, especially her close-minded friends, the first thing they thought was, you know, oh, so, you know what, you about to get a white man, then I'm about to unfriend you. Do you know there are so many races? We're, black and white aren't the only two. You know that, right? I'm just saying. <laughs> so, so, that goes back to that brokenness you know, she was speaking on. Just saying. <laughs> Maybe that's what it was. I, I don't know. But Some of them got to be broken feel? to even so just have that soul of mind. How do you feel about interracial dating, first and foremost, <laughs> and then that, that well, comment about the broken black man? Right. I'm going um, to go backwards because the broken black man, again, that's another strong wind that's coming by and knocking him down and cutting him off at his knees or just sniffing his balls all together. He knows that he's broken, okay? Some of them, let's just do that. Some of them are aware that they are broken, however, comma. What broke them? You know, we may not, not say we as in women, may not ever get to the bottom of that. May not ever get to the bottom of that. Everyone is broken. I mean, not everyone, but those that are broken are broken because of whatever that is. They have to be willing, the person that is broken, have to be willing to, find or and or confide in someone we as women always want it to be us i get it 
I really, 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 really do. However, comma, we as women also cannot, we can only relate so far when it comes to the broken man, the mind of a man, period, dot com, backslash, hashtag that. Because it, he's a man. We can study a man all day long. That will never, ever make us a man. Never. There's a limit. There's a cap. We reach it automatically without shadow of a doubt. So when it comes to being tired in the cycle of the broken black man, guess what? For the healed black man, and I have to say this, and I know women are like, she just be talking against women. I love women. I really do because I'm one of them because I love me. But I got to put on my big girl draws every day <laughs> through every situation that I have to face, like most grown women do. But those of us, for those of y'all that need to pull them up a little bit more, probably put a safety pin in them because you ain't had them on in a while. You've been used to wearing thongs but no ass or whatever's going on. You, we, women, have to realize that we don't have all the answers. There are some women that are broken, and that healed man don't want to keep dealing with no broken woman either. And her response is always going to be, well, nigga this and bitch that. I'm just saying. Because there's a whole bunch of niggas and bitches. Which is a whole other reason to add on to your other, earlier comment as to why men don't feel uh, or not feel, don't speak out on their mental stresses among women or their woman, period. Because what may come out of her mouth, Lord, have mercy, as women, we have the tendency, the absolute capability, and we know it, the power to cut him off wherever he speaks, wherever he stands. And we ain't even got to be having a bad day to do that. We can just do it just because. He knows that. That's a threat. I can hear someone saying, well, they sh- she shouldn't be a threat. She shouldn't be a threat. He should be trying to understand her. It's not always about him understanding her. It's about her understanding him as well. And then there's also that whole boundaries that I mentioned earlier. I don't know if I'm breaking up or not. And then the other part was it was the broken black woman and the the broken black man and the interracial couple, interracial relationship. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Am I? Okay. In the interracial relationship, I have absolutely no problem with it, none whatsoever. What I have a problem with in any relationship is the abuse that is stigmatized on interracial relationships. I know for one, for me, like, oh, if that's a cat, because I'm outside in the dark, if there was, if I was in a interracial relationship, my only thing is whatever the negative connotation that is used in that other culture that would degrade me in any way, I would not be able to tolerate it. That's the only that's the only qualm I have with inter- interracial relationships. Other than that, I don't have a problem with them. Why should other people's ignorance affect you? It shouldn't affect me. It shouldn't. So why it, should you have a I mean, problem it's a relationship. with it's other a, people's in a relationship? Yeah. If it's in a relationship, I'm talking about a relationship-wise. If this was me in a relationship, somebody else in a interracial relationship, enjoy that all day long. I don't want to – my whole my, – like I said, my whole thing is the cultural the cultural differences of we already know the the one main thing that most people deal with in, in – I don't want to say interracial, but in black and white couples, we're going to do that. And I say this because I have a goddaughter who I haven't seen in a very long time because her mother and father don't get along, and that just kind of spiraled out of control or whatever the case. But I witnessed an argument they were having, and she had this, looked like she had the demon of whatever the hell going on in her face, and she couldn't wait to call him a nigger. I mean, nigger, not nigger, not my nigger, nigger. Really? The father, of your, the father of your child. This is what we're doing right now. I can't even. I just, I just can't. That's that's where my like. 
I don't I forgot what the word is, the terminology in Hawaii when I was down there I found um a store owner I was talking to and she was giving me some she was enlightening me on the various words they use to describe us as black people in a negative way and as what the words they use to describe white people in a negative way. And I'm like, dang, that put me in a mindset to say what I'm saying now because ever since then I'm like, you know what? Yeah, that's a thing in any culture. Whatever you call like the the horriblest thing I could ever imagine or I have ever heard, to be honest, and it was a nigga and one cracker and I'm, I'm I'm not saying that to offend anyone, is yellow. Why would you call somebody yellow? I feel like <laughs> my chest hurts. Like I don't for real, that hurts my chest. Like it tightens a little bit. Like don't why would you do that? Like, I don't know. If you're gonna be in an interracial relation interracial relationship, all I gotta say is that <laughs> I can't say it's for me. I'm just, you know, clearly I can't say it's for me. Y'all just heard me, right? But if that's what you're going to choose to do, just be ready because that comes with a lot. I'm just saying. You already have, each each culture has their own stresses in their own way as it is, whether it be family or just because of the fact that they have cultural differences. Just be ready to deal with that. Just that's all I'm saying. I'll come to your wedding and throw some rice or doves or whatever the hell we're giving out, uh, blow some bubbles. But, yeah, I just... Where I'm at. It ain't for me. It's, it's not for you, girl. I like white Russians, though. I need like three of them. I don't need that much ice. Right. Lee Lash. Paper Boy. Woo! If you know me and I. And your man's done left ya Just call on me I'll come and show you you're special And feeling like I know ya I fuck you like I owe ya And the same as a motherfucker No, I would never boo ya Follow suit like a soldier When you gotta answer your call I stay quiet while you run it While taking your clothes off You dropping your car I'm dropping your drawers Getting ready to uh, uh Cause I got a sauce Super high on Mars Feeling in the sky on Mars And I got that glow Feel like I'm riding on stars I'm your best friend Where it is we ain't fucking both flying on God Relationship on happen And mine on Mars You tell me you getting so lonely Love me because I ain't funny Know that I'm thugging with bitches Must serve my duty like Tommy Cool best friend, I'm your best friend, and still might be fucking your best friend. No phone calls and no sexting. Only can you make a move, bro texting, bro texting. I'll beat you there. Time by, bitch, I'm the wave. Dine there, I'll eat you there. Work on the table, be teacher there. Handcuff, y'all keep you there. Lock down while I box you down. Inside your ring, I'll beat you there. You be lonely at night. Because your man be leaving. Y'all both doing your thing. So what we doing ain't cheating. You calling me and I'm there, girl. You on my head like hair, girl. I'm on your mind like heavy D. My kind so real, girl. I show you you're special. No, I won't neglect you. No, I won't upset you. I'll always accept you. You call it best, best friend and bro. Busting out tummy, old big foes. Call when you stressing about to explode. Talking about shit that I shouldn't know. Best friend, cool best friend. Just a lot of shit that they don't know. Best friend, cool best friend, cool best friend. I just might be fucking your best friend. Cool best friend, cool best friend. Just a lot of shit that they don't know. Best friend, cool best friend, cool best friend. I just might be fucking your best friend. Your best friend. I just might be fucking your best friend. I just might be fucking your best friend. Best friend and the best, 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 best
Yeah. I like that one too. Can we lose her? Nakia. How these artists are, they always got all this little, little intro, outro, overlay. He ain't done yet. Hear the music? Yeah, I hear it now. <laughs> That's when he got you up against the wall right there. He got his hand up on your neck, trying to choke the spit out of you. Yeah. Alright, I'm my bad. I got carried away there for a minute. Yo, that was best friend, Anthem. Um, Kiwi out of New Orleans, Louisiana. If you missed that interview, Kiwi was live was it the beginning of this month? Yeah, maybe like the first of this month? No, last month? What was Kiwi here? Yeah, last month. Yeah, last month. Okay. Anyway, song is brand new. Best Friend Anthem. You can check the visuals out on YouTube. They are out now. Make sure you're showing that artist some love right there. I got a date with him in April. I'm excited. Yeah. You ought to be. That should be a good one. <laughs> mhm. Sam. We got some business to talk about. All right, so <laughs> speaking of business to talk about and up against the wall with the throat and all of that, have you ever or or have you, I don't know, because I know you, so we don't say have you ever <laughs> wanted to. We don't say have you ever wanted to. Have you ever wanted to pull up to a man's house with – just a trench coat covering some sexy lingerie and you fuck him heels. No, but then you realize he's either, you know, homeless or he lives with his mama or, you know, he married, you know. <laughs> but you never wanted to do that? <laughs> never? Why do you already know he was married before you even put that on hold up at the door? I can't. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> no, I've ne no. I seen it in the Some movie people and don't find and out until they pull up on the street and see him getting out of the minivan because they always seen him in the Beamer, right? But then all of a sudden they I pull can't. up on the street and then they see him get out of the minivan, unloading the, the car seat in one hand, holding the two year old hand, oh. the sixteen year old and the sixteen year old jump out the back seat and the wife get out the front seat pregnant again. So because mm. mm. he lied. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He lied. And the, she mm. didn't know that. And so mm. Mm. Seeing that she didn't have Who's that story is this? I feel like that's somebody that, that's really walking around. That's somebody. <laughs> he probably is. <laughs> Seeing that she didn't have nothing on but a trench coat and heels, she wasn't ready to, um, you know, throw no hands. She wasn't ready for no confrontation. So she just had to drop on by. But, mm. you know, so she didn't know he was married. But then you got <laughs> the ones who know, like, I, he little his, this is going to my head, like, at 2 o'clock in the morning. Like, but I want to, I really want to come through and chill, but you live with your grandma. Like, you at least live in the basement, you know, so I can come in through the separate door that's, you know, in the basement, or do I got to come in through the main door? Oh, stairs, and where am I going to open the door? You know what I'm saying? How does it work? Like, oh, you there with your grandma and then your other brothers and sisters too? Or even your mother and your stepdad? You know, I'm like, where do you get free time? You know, like, can you get a room? I'm saying, like, <laughs> ain't you grown? <laughs> Oh, you never wanted to do that? Never? No. No? No? Damn. I guess I ain't with him yet. I ain't, no. <laughs> okay, awesome. so. In theory, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Sounds real great. Dressed up with some heels on. And I'm like, was my hip going to be right today? <laughs> I quit. <laughs> I right, so 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 okay. So you don't wanna you don't wanna do the thing, go out in public or whatever with your little trench coat <laughs> and lingerie on. What about role playing? No, I, I'm I'm for role playing, public or not. It's just the whole trench coat thing just threw me off. Like I don't. I'm, I'm but good. you gotta I'm come out. Like, you just can't go out there with the lingerie on. Yeah. Okay, well then listen to me. You know you can't go out there with lingerie on, so you should probably just be completely dressed. I'm just saying. I like I like um taking the risk. <laughs> you know, just go ahead and roll with the risk because I'm already dressed. We gonna be risking it all anyway. So yeah, let's go and see how we can work this out. 
in the park by the tree, you know, on a trail somewhere. Okay. Or okay. I'll however, go wherever we at, because the Ooh, wind is blowing yeah. and it's about to look like it's out in the rain or something or whatever. Yeah. Or it's it's a good I, warm day, but it's not too balmy, you know, so we can work something out somewhere. Right. It doesn't matter. I got you. Right here is good enough. You know, that's told you, because that's how we started. That's how this whole mess got started. Fooling with you. What? And them gems. Me? <laughs> them gems oh. and crystals. Oh, and I'm not like, me. listen, give me some pearl handcuffs or something. I can't be fooling with other stuff. Just <laughs> Give me the other, give me the other shit. Give me some crossbars. I don't know. I ain't into nipple clips. Can't do those. Cause I'm just, mm-mm. don't. I prefer teeth over nipple clips. I can't. That's all I'm saying. I'm just, I don't know. Trench coat, heels, front door. Nope. Never thought about it. <laughs> Clearly, you have those. Oh. Huh? Mm-hmm. No, that was yeah. another question. But you know, when I got the questions, I had time to think about, um, you know, had I thought that no, not really the trench coat, like because that would be something I would have to buy. Like I don't own a trench coat. I barely maybe you should get a short one. Yeah, now the weather doesn't short. get as cold as it does in New York, so exactly. I don't really, well, I you know, one. I don't, you know what I'm saying, like. But I have plenty of wrap dresses where all it takes is, like, you pull the string and, bam, it just falls down. You know what I mean? Bam, it's gone. <laughs> you just pop a bell, and it's know. gone. You know? <laughs> I buy them intentionally for that reason right I there. Cannot. You see me come out the house with a wrap dress, you already know what Where's the button? Where's the button? Where's the button? I'm just saying. Okay. It's right there yeah. under the breast. So the right breast. You just All you got to do is just pop the button. Easy access. They just fall right down. Damn. There's that. Yes. All right, then. Okay. Yes. Nope. No, no way to wrap this in church. Mm-mm. No. Mm. <laughs> no, please don't. No. Which brings that me probably to, good. Which I love how all of this just kind of flows together. Right. Which brings me to another question. Do you feel okay. that women and men, um, they block their blessing by having or looking for a specific type? Um, I would have to say, yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah, 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 um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to have to put some extra thought into that one, yeah, because, I mean, uh, Comfort, you know, comfort doesn't lead to you doesn't lead to you being content. Comfort leads to you just being comfortable. I'm comfortable. You can be comfortable in a bad damn sweat. You know what I mean? Because I got a finger ass neighbor that lets the dogs out. Let you know in the backyard. I can't. But yeah. So yeah, I just I can't. It's about comfort. So not to be to not be as comfortable, you have to step outside of the box because when you continuously look for a certain type of person and then you're like, oh, that's the same as I don't had that type before, and I don't know why all these, yeah, that's where that comes from, comfort, because you keep picking the same shit, expecting different results. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work. I think I'm back in. My- uh, um, break up spot. So, so what is your type? My type? Do I have a type? Gotta be able to communicate. And for me, communication, communicating does mean comprehending. Just saying. Because, yeah, that's not separate. Come together automatically. Yeah. Gotta be able to communicate. It's important. Effectively. Like, for real. That's that's my type. Must know how to pray. Need you. Need you to be on that. For real. I can't be the only one praying. I get tired and some days I do not pray. Because I don't want to pray amiss. I 
don't want to pray just because the sky is blue. We ain't doing that. No, I'm not doing it. You can, but I'm not. But you got to know how to pray. I'm just saying. There's no body shape to my type. There's a mentality to my type. Spirituality is important. Consistency, everything to me. Hmm. What is your type with the 17-year record? Resume. 17 pages, not years, honey. 17 pages. Oh, shit, my bad. Well, I don't tell. I don't need pages. Yet. Well, pages. We're going to go with pages. We're going with pages. We have so what's your type with the 17? We go with years. We go with years. We're talking like 30 years. So we need to go with pages, all right? So we're going to go with pages. Tell men, I always tell men. When they ask me, you know, like, what's your type? Or when I was on these social, um, what do you call them, social dating sites, when somebody would ask yeah. me, that was a big turnoff. That was a huge turnoff for me because if I didn't list my type, if I wasn't specific with my type, uh, and I know that those are like icebreakers or whatever, but I always told men that I feel like you limit your possibilities when you have restrictions. You could have in the back of your mind, you know, I want somebody that makes eighty thousand dollars a year, who lives the south of France, who doesn't eat meat, whose parents are deceased, who um, doesn't like oh. kids. You know, you who doesn't smoke, you can have specific. That ain't mine. I'm gonna tell you mine in a minute. You could have those specific <laughs> criteria that you right. like to go by. <laughs> But I feel like you, again, you limit your possibilities when you have these restrictions because that perfect person could have been, you know, the one who made $62,000 a year. You know, the one who didn't right. live in South of France, but he lived north of the bayou. You know what I mean? So when you stay close up in that bubble and you you don't expand upon what you're, what you're accustomed to, you know, you date only what you're used to. Um, you never want to date right. outside of your box. You know, I love inter- interracial. <laughs> I love long distance dating. <laughs> my my girlfriend, one singular, knocked me because she's like, I don't understand how you do that. Like, I need somebody, you know, um, that's you. I'm not clingy. I'm not needy. I'm very, very, very independent. I don't want nobody who's going to be in my backyard every time I turn around, every time I open up my front door. He, he is staring at me. You know what I'm saying? What you doing tonight? Nothing. All right, I'm coming over. I don't want that. You know what I'm saying? Can you be ready in 45 minutes? I'm about to pick you up. No. I want at least six hours. <laughs> Give me time to miss you. Let me drive distance. You know what I'm saying? Let me catch a flight to come see you. I, I need distance. That's always worked just fine for me. So it doesn't work for you? I'm sorry. To each his own. I don't have an issue with it. Right. You know what I'm saying? But my type... Um, <laughs> my type recently, I'll, I'll say, within the last five years, seems to be very consistent. So I think I have a type now. All right? Got to okay. be bald. Okay. Got to be bald. I already know. Yeah, gotta be bald. I can agree. If you got hair, <laughs> you got hair. Don't even come out way. You got some hair. All right? If you losing hair, you ain't bald yet. Mm-mm. Got to be bald. I like beards. She's telling the truth, I y'all. Like She's telling the truth. full beard. Full beard. All right? No, I'm... Yeah. Full beard. Um, I like yeah. a perfect smile. I mean, you could smile and it'd be like, you know, how they smile and one lip be up. You know, it's how they try to be sexy with it, you know, a gangster with it, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. when you do yeah. finally smile and you see all those teeth, like, I don't want to see 20 yeah. years of you smoking. Or I don't want to see four teeth here, one over there, a gold cap missing over here. Uh. But you got, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I, I just, I like a pretty <sighs> smile. I like a man who does like smile. Like. You know what I'm saying? That just shows that you, 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 you got something to smile about. At least when you see me or when you're with That's me good. or when you talk to me, you got something to right. smile about. I like a man who is chocolate. 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 Or a. She like chocolate and wine, bald head, braids. Did you say, did you say or Asian? Asian. Yep. She said Asian. There it is. We getting I on the plane, Asian. y'all. Oh, no, 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 no. We getting no, on the plane. It depends. We ain't going to China. I mean, 
You know what I'm saying? No, nah, we ain't got but, to go um, to China. <laughs> we're gonna, I'm we going, going to protect her. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I'm just saying. Nothing against, nothing against Asians. I'm just, I don't know. Seen too many Jackie Chan movies. Love Jackie. Love him. But, yeah. Yeah. Somebody like, he ain't yeah. Asian. I, I need a but man I'm just saying. Is, I get it. Is, is, um, <clears throat> is going to be able to... Um, Feed me, and I'm not talking about, um, you know, food, food. Like, I need you mm-hmm. to be able to um, feed me spiritually. I need you to feed me mentally, emotionally, mm-hmm. um, physically. Mm-hmm. I need you to feed me. <laughs> Um, and I'm again it's not talking about food. Um, not talking about food, but I'm saying I need somebody that's going to uh, pour into me just as much as I pour into him. I need somebody who's right. going to um, be able to. And before we even talk about the word love or or falling in love or any of that, I need somebody who's going to be able to be accepting of me from the inside out. Because when you look at people, the first thing you see is their outer appearance. You have no idea right. the turmoil that may what be they going on with, yeah. in them. Right. right? So mm-hmm. I don't have a problem. My life's an open book because I'm on, you know, radio. My life's an open book. I share so much with people. But I feel like this man has to be able to know all parts <clears throat> of me in and out and I always say this you know once we get to that level like you first time you say I love you no dude you loving everything you see on the outside like I need somebody that's going to be able to love me from the inside out and if when if his response is oh that's deep mm-mm, then you're not the one that's going to be it. deep mm-hmm. that's just the one on, right because that's you know what just, I'm right next you occupying too much time right. space and energy moving on you know, we gotta move on to the next way, you know. <laughs> but with with that nah, also it's a game being show. said out of here. With, <laughs> with that also being Good said, man. um, I found that mm. everybody knows that um, you know, I'm a pastor's daughter and so that little that little saying about preacher's kids always being like the worst ones, I swear, I don't know who started that lie because we are not like I can't speak no, for all of them, but I'm not I am not right, right? <laughs> lies <laughs> but we supposed to hit the buzzer run that one buzz <laughs> oh buzz that right. but um <laughs> my bad I was late but, oh, um, on cue. yeah I see you were very late but I um I feel that the older I've gotten you know Things have yeah. been revealed to me, and I realized okay. that within that certain type of man that I prefer um, mm-hmm. has also come along. You know, it's one thing to say, you know, I'm a God-fearing man. I don't even think men right. know half the time when they say that what they're really saying, um, when they Ooh. say that they're a God-fearing man. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's just, you, you know, you, and I, if people use the words so freely nowadays because you have well, women that are wait, so no, just explain that for a second you got to explain that for a minute explain that what, what, I'm what trying to get there to be a I'm trying man. to get oh, okay. there Cause I, I, my attention span can I, I get there lose it either. yeah I guess can I I'm get excited there? go ahead my bad, bad alright so you, you have so many women who now um they they want that God fearing, earnestly religious man, right? And I think that a lot of men prey on the vulnerability of women um, by using, you know, mm. I'm in church every Sunday. I go to, I go to Bible study. You know, I'm the armor bearer for the pastor. You know, um, I do prison ministry. You know what I'm saying? They they, they use all these uh, references to. Mm-hmm. Um, equate to their their religion, mm-hmm. how they're living, you know, their lives through Christianity or whatever, um, right. and it looks good in front of these women, only to no, 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 no. get down to to the to the base and see that 
this man is no different from, you know, say that local drug dealer who do go to church every Sunday or every other Sunday or on Mother's Day and Christmas. You know what I'm saying? They, they're no different. Uh, and and I'm, I got an example for that one as well. But I think they just, the term God-fearing is just used so loosely. And for me, yeah. um, I think that God-fearing is is a phrase that um, is used to describe um, people, and I guess I say religious people, we think Christians, who um, try to obey the rules of their religion, try to be pleasing in um, God's sight, and try to do everything that they feel is morally and ethically Right. That's what I right. feel that God fearing is. But I don't think that um with what I said, what I how I just described, how I that's how I always, was always taught that, you know, when, when you're when you're God fearing, you do, you follow the commandments. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's something I wish as a and I, I'm I'll be the first to admit this, as a preacher's kid as a child of, I have everybody in my family is of is of some part of the cloth. All right, everybody, right. Right? all my cousins that we all grew up together. Everybody's preaching now, and they looking at me like, and I'm looking at them like, and we all just looking at each other like, and I'm shaking my head like, no, you know what I'm saying? Right. Because you know, I tell people, I tell people all the time, we're all gifted with the ministry. I never said that we were all gifted to be ministers. All right, hear me again. Come on. We are all gifted right. with a ministry. It is for each of us to tap into what that God-given right. ministry is. Mine is to serve others. Right. So I do it in many, 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 many different capacities. But you won't find me right. up in, you know, he got to call my name extra, extra loud and, and reconfirm and confirm. You know what I'm saying? And I, I just don't, I, I don't see, I, I, so that's what I'm saying on that right there. But what I was always okay. taught was that, you know, if you live, by the Bible, because the Bible is supposed to be the book of life, right? So, right. why why do we have so many issues in this world? Why are there so many problems in this world if we were living according <clears throat> to the Bible, if it is the book of life? And you know what? I go back and read things now and think to myself, like, oh my gosh. Like, if I really would have been in my word like I should have been like 20 years ago, think where I would be now. You know, and that's what right. I like about God, how he gives us, even though he's already predestined in <laughs> our lives before we were born, he gives right. us free will to screw up and make all kinds of mistakes. You know what I'm saying? And I believe that every mistake that I made has been, you know, a part of my developing process. Um, it has made me, or they have made me into this phenomenal woman that I am now. He gave me I that love free it. will to be able to make all of those mistakes and all of those errors took me through all of those, I'm sorry, I took myself through all of those trials, tribulations, you know, those obstacles and everything, but he brought me through over and above all of that. And so, but I believe that when I'm with somebody, if you are screaming, I'm God fearing, I'm God fearing, I'm God, no good, damn well, you not, you know what I'm saying? Because (laughs) my definition of God fearing, you ain't being moral, you're not being ethical about, or you're not ethically, you know what I'm saying? About anything that you're this, you're running game is what you think you're doing. You know right. what I'm saying? But yeah. just because I am, um, I, I and, and they tell Christians, tell you, or the pastor tells you in church every Sunday, you know, you can be, you can't, like, you can't be on both sides of the fence. You can't straddle the fence. You got to be for Christ or for the devil, right? You can't be in right. the world and of the world. But, you know, that's the joy, again, of God giving us free will. Because people like me, I'm in the world of the world, but I'm also rooted in the word, all right? So it ain't too much game that you can run over me. You can't throw them Bible verses and don't think that I'm going to be able to, and you know, make them applicable to the situation yeah. and to the life and everything and think they're going to just fly over my head because, no, because I'm, I'm going to be able they're to not. All right. do that with Mm-mm. the right. word as well as the world. You know what I'm saying? So all right. I just feel like men, especially the ones that I deal with, you know, that, they yeah. throw that term God fearing out so loosely, and, and I can say that because you know <clears throat> the last couple of ones that I've dealt with have been pastors. Okay, 
Right. Come on, somebody. Where the tambourine lady at? I need her. Right? So, okay. Um, yeah. I just feel like, you, <laughs> just, I feel like, you know, um, you titles, titles go to people's oh, heads yeah. as well. They you know do. what I'm saying? Hey, I'm, I'm the minister of music. What? You know what I'm saying? I'm the pastor, but you don't act that way. You know, again, you, mm. you act no different than the last bum I was with. You know what I'm saying? You just, <laughs> so, well, yeah. But I see, and I said all of that to say I see that as I get older, that um, my type is very specific. Like, I keep being Clearly. drawn. I keep being drawn to these bald-headed chocolates. Smiling, what is it about the bald head? Nice, pretty teeth, six foot tall, full bearded pastors. I keep being, like they a, keep, they get like right a now. magnetic attraction. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, again, if you're listening and you're a pastor and you got a full head of hair, don't worry, I'm not for you. All right. So, <laughs> but I, I, <laughs> and you know, and the Wait. thing about that is, I, I said to myself a couple years ago when this first popped into my head, this whole idea of me being like this first lady, I was like, nah, mm. you got too much, like, mm-hmm. right? Mm. You know, right now. Mm. And I ran from it. Mm. I ran from it, right? But the Lord started speaking to me, and he was like, you know what? I'm I'm positioning you for where mm. I want you to be. And I'm like, mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> okay. Mm. But I got a couple more years to play. You know what I'm saying? I had a couple more years mm. that I need to play. And I don't, I don't have time to be sitting on the front row with the long dress on, you know what I'm saying, acting dignified. and stuff. I want to be the first lady to sit, like, on the seventh pew, right in the middle of the section, you know what I'm saying, still wearing my skirts above my knee. And I'll see first ladies like that, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, yeah. But, but that's just what I'm looking yeah, for, right? So, um, that's just the shell of I, the person, so. It's the shell. Huh? Who's it's shell? just the shell of the person. You, I said that's just the shell. You said about the skirt above the knee. I'm saying that's just the shell. It's just clothing. That's not what makes you the pastor's yes, wife. Is, aside <laughs> from being his, aside from being his wife, I'm just saying that's not what makes you the pastor's wife. She's talking about yes, it is. No, it ain't. Yes, it is. And I wish, I just so, wish a couple, uh, wish a couple pastor wives would grasp that one and run with it. But you know, we're gonna keep going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Roll right on past yeah. that. And and you know yeah. when I again, which brings me back to having a specific type, you know that mm-hmm. pastors are men, right? They're men. They're men, just like regular <laughs> yeah, men. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which is why I ran yeah, from the, they are. the first pastor many years ago. I ran from him because, you know, he got serious before we even really got on good speaking terms. He was serious. You know, the Lord had spoke to him and told him that I was going to be his, his elect lady. And, and I knew what that mm. meant, but I didn't want to know what that meant. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I went right. to my, my little cousin who's a pastor and was like, yo, this dude just told me this right here. And he was like, hold up. Is this dude a pastor? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, so you know what this means, right? And I was like, yeah, why are you all excited? Yeah, I know what it means, but mm, I'm about to shut this down. I'm about to block him on all social media. Like, I'm about to block his number. Like, I'm not ready for this. Uh-uh. Nah, and he didn't mean, like, elect right then, but, you know, he was just saying that's what the Lord had told him. But the Lord ain't told me nothing because I feel like, you know how sometimes you have to step in the gap for somebody or you have to, yeah. you know, be an intercession for somebody I feel like when the yeah. Lord drops something in somebody's spirit and it relates to me, he ought to drop that same thing in my spirit, too. It shouldn't be no middleman. Mm. Like, that person can't mm. come to me and tell me, the Lord dropped this in my spirit. Like, I'm so connected with God myself. Like, I can feel something to myself. You know what I'm saying? My, yeah. my spirit of right. discernment is very strong. And so I should be able to feel yes. something myself about somebody. But when you come telling me what the Lord and which Uh-oh. also makes me question, what mm. God be serving? You know what I'm saying? Like, I got to make sure we're on the same playing field. I got to make sure your ulterior motives match up with my ulterior motives. You know what I mean? Because right. if you're talking one thing, but you're showing me another thing, but I'm talking to God mm. about you, but I'm not seeing that through you, we're not, we, we, we not, we, we not, we not, not the same we, you know what I'm saying? We're not balancing <laughs> each other out like Susie said. We're right. not doing that. 
Right. So, yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm trying. This is like my therapy session tonight. This is what I'm trying to work through. I see that. You know what I mean? So work through it then. Okay. I understand. No, yeah. I get it. I you, you, you get mean. it? You get it? I don't get it. I think what I need it. is, and all of that, I need a man with a cape. Like Superman. Did you say a cape? Yeah, Superman. Okay. Like Superman. Like this right here. Yeah. Oh, that's the movie. Oh, okay. Shades on, cape on, Superman, hey, they want somebody to save them, money is all that I say, so, step aside, step aside, no time for the game, cause it's all they play. Must be used to this lame yeah. Guessing the river's in danger. Yeah. Don't try to compete with my lane. lane. They think I should worry, I can't. Lane. Superman, Superman. Yeah. Should kill O'Neill in the pain. Yeah. As soon as they see you make a little fame, all of the ladies start going insane. Watch out, it's crypto night, they could take game. No need to dodge, cause I'm all out of range. Yeah. These girls really out here running game. Running game. Running game. Uh, Classic, but I ain't scared to play. I ain't scared to play. See, just a digger for the gold, I get it. So I know what you're thinking She just looking for the next big ticket Just like a cop on the block when they clockin' But I caught it like, uh, shades on, cape on Superman, hey They want somebody to save them Money is all that I save Step aside, step aside No time for the game Cause that's all they play here on Indie Fire with our anti-Valentine's Day show. I'm live right here. Yeah. Oh, Susie Newton of Safe and Sexy Radio. Um, yeah. So we were talking about having a type, right? I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. Ooh, I'm so rude. That was uh, entertainer, uh, right. artist, uh, choreographer, uh, producer, engineer, Jew Major with Superman. 
save him. And as you can imagine, you know, in that song, he talked about, you know, females who want or need or both a man to be that guy who's just going to save them from everything. And I remember him saying, because he was on the show this week, yeah, okay. Monday. He was on the show Monday. So he was saying that he's not that guy. You know what I'm saying? I'm not that guy that's going to put on the cape and, and come save you. You need that $40. You need to work for it. You know what I mean? So right. <laughs> it's just like, I'm not that dude. Where I, 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 I get it. I, okay. <laughs> right. You need hey, that $40. Up them time. I'm not I'm that like, dude. $40? <laughs> Why is it forty dollars? What is happening with the forty dollars? Am I missing something? What's going on with the forty dollars? I just totally went over yeah. my head. Okay. Yeah. I'm bad. So you know, <laughs> but I'm thinking, I you know what? I have this friend right now, and we met by by chance. Um, shout out to Pinterest Monique. Um, she has a group on Facebook. I think she has several groups, but she has one group, and I don't know the name of it. Um, but um, each day there's like a topic of discussion. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't mm-hmm. remember which days go. Well, I know Fridays is like Freaky Fridays. I do know that. But um, I want to say it's Thursday or maybe it's Tuesday. The topic is like anything that's dealing with your <clears throat> your yoni. Okay. And so <laughs> um, it was last week. Like I she said that. Thursday. You're a yoni. Yeah. She decided that she wanted to do like helpful um, helpful, um, like not, not a helpful discussion, but she gave you 20, 20 tips on how to take care of your yoni and what you were not supposed to do with your yoni. <laughs> I, right? so I can't stand that word. If you want to keep it real, I can't I stand it. it. I, why so, are you, um, I guess, okay. Yes. Cause you know, I'm trying to be, you know, I ain't want to just, you, I don't, you know, okay. might be just right. Yeah. Listen, I, so, That's right. um, <laughs> so, this is what I used to call it when my daughter, when she was um, little, when she was like two, potty training, you know, um, and really learning, you know, how to potty train. It was her pound cake, all right? So it's her pound got cake it. she was like five. I don't pound know cake. when they actually got a name, but yeah, her pound cake. Yeah. So um, that's what we're going to call it tonight. All right, your pound cake. All right. <laughs> so gotcha. um, I wasn't feeling too well that day. I ain't really been myself mm-hmm. for the past two weeks. And so... Um, everything that, and I was I was on you know on the on the job working or whatever had my little wine and um don't ask no questions and so um, everything that she said it was funny to me like I posted like some some crazy response like I was I bought the comedy to everything she was being serious about you know like she's talking about right like, you don't need to do you know you have to keep your pH balance you know the way it was supposed to be and how you know bacteria talking about bacteria talking about men and their sperm and and so i i had just this right. response to everything and so this guy commented um on one of the one of the posts and mm-hmm. oh my gosh it was like he was like manna from heaven oh my gosh he is just gorgeous i mean he is gorgeous okay <laughs> I can't emphasize like, how back, gorgeous back. he but is. Okay. <laughs> but, okay. but you know me in my mind, um, you commented on something that I said, and so I, I, we we went through this, like, all day. But within a couple of minutes, you know, I was coming on so strong that I felt like you should have already slid into my DM, you know. I didn't find out that he did until two hours later because, you know, on, on Facebook or inbox, on Facebook, you know, if you're not friends with the person, they filter their message. So it wasn't until somebody right. actually sent me a box message that I saw that I had a filter message in it. It was from him. And I made the statement. I was like, yeah, I knew you, you know, I knew you should have been over here by now. You know, either way, we've been talking ever since then. And even though he is gorgeous, I mean, gorgeous, gorgeous, I got over it. Really, I did. Okay. I got over it yes. within like two or three days. I got over the fact. All right. I got over his look. Yes. I did <clears throat> because of his personality. It radiates and shines through the exterior, and that's okay. what I'm looking for. You know, and the fact that only in conversing in a week he feels that he has showed me 
his vulnerable side, he has been so open and honest about, you know, I don't like people to sugarcoat. You know what I'm saying? Don't try to impress me. We too old for this bullshit. You know what I mean? We too old for that. I don't like yeah. to play games. I really don't. And so, but he's shown me nothing but, you know, being a true gentleman. And I, I made that statement to him. I was like, you know what? I looked through, I looked, I haven't even gone to your page and stalk your page like I would normally do, a new guy. Mm-hmm. Stalk your page. I know all about your family. I know all about your mama, your daddy, your kids. I know everything. Because I don't, I went through the pictures. I read all the comments. I do that. So I learned people, you know? <laughs> so he was like, oh, right, really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I, I didn't <laughs> yeah, feel the need yeah. to do that, you know what I'm saying? Because you've been so open and sharing, you know, everything. Um, and it's, it's now when you want somebody in your backyard, like, I because I need a hug. Like, I need a hug. And you're on the other <laughs> side of the damn country. Like, you over there on the other side of the country. I'm like, damn, here yeah, I go. You got to fly for this us. Long it's, it's, it's take a flight. again. So, yeah, right, I'm already plotting. I'm already plotting for my, my next flight on that side. But I was in Walmart today, and, you know, today, you know, they, everything is 50% off. And right. there was this, this um, I bought, like, smaller stuff, like smaller stuff, animals, cars, and flowers, you know, the, the plastic kind that I can give out to people throughout the year. But I saw this huge elephant, and I thought of him. Don't ask me why I thought of him at the elephant. And my son was with me, and he was like, for real? You don't even do stuff, animals. I mean, the ones that I do have are all elephants, you know, because I'm a doctor. But um, th- I just saw this elephant, and I thought of him. And the more I looked at the elephant, I just was like, oh, my gosh. Like, so I'm going to name the elephant after him. So I was trying to get the elephant a name. I cannot with you. I, I quit. I know. I can't with me either. It must be why. <laughs> I'll be all right tomorrow. I will. I'll be all right tomorrow. I will. I will be okay tomorrow. All right. So, about that. Yeah, but, you know, talking about, um, you know what? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's play this. Mm-hmm. Let's play this right quick. Mm-hmm. Let me play this. <laughs> <laughs> A juice deep in the pool, I might drown. Addicted to a juice deep in the pool, I might drown. MME, I addicted to a juice deep in the pool, I might drown. Addicted to a juice deep in the pool, I might drown. Addicted to a juice deep in the pool, I might drown. Addicted to a juice deep in the pool, I might drown. She ain't no good for me, but I still want around. Will we ever grow or will it still fail? Will I get too fucked up if I hit this cup again? Deep off in the pool, but I'm knowing how to swim. But I'm in too deep, she get under my skin. I got that sunny G juice, she got Tropicana. So addicted to this bitch, I ain't never been like this. Dehydration, need a sip for you, baby. Role play bad, got you love when I take it. If I can't get your juice, I don't know if I'll make it. But your juice like poison, I don't know if I can take it. Dehydration, need a sip for you. Baby, role play bad, got you love when I take it. If I can't get your juice, I don't know if I make it. But your juice is like poison, I don't know if Will I can my make God it. I'm caddy corner from coroners after the crucifixion. I hoof it because of Paul. I fuck her because I'm horny. I poke her the bitch for the gold of the brick and mortar. I built it and then she came. Tupac and Maggie, your belly, the prince in the purple rain. The theory, the seventh day. I think her pussy is Schrodinger's. And if I plan to keep her kitty misty, she gon' have to miss me. Vanity, my bitch, imagine me. A fantasy is getting hard to manage me. I nutted in Persephone. Now Hades is in agony. I skate like Nagano. Known to knock a nigga knocking off. I nodded off. Awake, I'm not at all. I started pissing in the bed. I dripped of chasing waterfalls. And it's the chamber by the call the kettle black. Who am I to question that? Something on me 
I cannot explain Telling me she love me, but she playing every game I know she ain't good for me, but it's good to me Took my soul and my mind when she's flashing with that red thing Swear to God, shorty drowning me, but I still want to drink Smart nigga, but right now, I can barely think Got me staring like a stalker, damn, I can barely blink All she gotta do is smile and I'm putty in her hand Get my mind set on leaving, here she come again Rub and a kiss and the ultimate passion Batter eyes a few times, I get the unpacking Charm and seduction got me stranded in her game Swerving and drunk sex and entering her lane Nothing is the same and I'm nothing like I was Addicted to your juice, always ready for some more Will Damn. my garden grow under acid rain? Just tuning in, you're live right here on Indie Fire with your girl, Nakia, and my girl, Susie from Saved and Sexy Radio. And that was New Way featuring Peach with Juice. And they tell me that Juice um, bridges the gap between hip-hop and R&B to express their love addiction for a woman's juice. Y'all so nasty, and that's new, new. I'm talking about that just dropped this week, February the 11th was the release date on that right there. Yes. I had to listen to the uh the hook like a couple times. I was like, wait, what is he saying? Oh June. Yes. Oh. June. Yes. Yes, that's I new wave out of no Vegas. More. And you ain't uh uh-uh, uh right, new wave. Not for that kind of thing. <laughs> Give me some water. Nope. Water. Nope. <laughs> water. Wine and water. That's all I'm drinking. <laughs> That's I Mobile like the music old school vibe though. New wave. Mobile music. You like what? New wave. I like the uh the old school vibe to it. Yeah, it yeah. There. It was the head rock. It was the head knock. The light one, yeah. not the hard one. Cause, you know, right. <laughs> My head is knocking hard yeah. right now. Ow. Oh, Ow. I so do you think that? And I'm gonna use your your words here. Save okay. and sexy men. Oh, Lord. Do you think they oh, are? Okay the biggest hypocrite and hide behind the word or the cloth? Wow. Good God. You had to ask me that question? I don't, I don't, um, well, mm, mm, no. <laughs> no? <laughs> got, he got me being like, no. Nah. Just have to think about it a little bit more. No, no. Some of them are. Just the ones I do, right? <laughs> and Pastor uh, Wilson. I don't do. <laughs> we just gonna we just gonna leave the past. We just gonna set them to the side over there. We'll discuss that off air. Just saying. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, no, some of them are. Some some of them are. And uh, uh you know, two way street because it go both ways. But uh, yeah, no, some of them are. Not all. That's that's what I got. That's all I got. Feel like I'm sitting up straight, pulling my skirt down past my knees. I don't even have a skirt, y'all. I'm just, <laughs> just saying, I don't have skirts. But yeah, I just, yeah. Mm-mm. Some of them are. Some of them, some of them absolutely are. I, yeah, yeah. I love the. So sarcastically, she says, "I love the uh, Bible thumping ones that mm-hmm. use God for their glory." Oh, I just love yes, them so very yes. much. I just yes. find them so adoring. They're fabulous, even. Yes. Um, yes. And then you have, oh, heaven help me today. Because I've seen, I help seen some things. I'm just saying, I've seen some things. This is what happens. I don't, you see stuff when you work in any type of ministry. Um, I've just done seen some things that just get a little like, really? Did that happen? That didn't happen. Was I tripping? Is that what was going on? No, nah, that ain't what was going on from both sides, men and women. It just trips me out. Like, stop it. Don't do that. Don't do it. 
it ain't good. It ain't good. I got some tricks and tips and things I ain't even did with my ex-husband that I'm just waiting to do it. My husband, that's actually my husband whenever he get here. Just saying. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. I said it. I said it. She, she, no. Nope. That she didn't do her mm. ex husband, but she gonna do it her husband when he I said that. Yeah. Just so, saying. All right, so I said that. I know that you're not currently married. How many times have you been married? No. Four? Two. Two. What? <laughs> Two. You got me waking up everybody out here. Two. <laughs> no damn stop. Them. I can't do it four times. The first time was all on me. That's on me, baby. That second one, um, oh, yeah. That second one, I'll take that one. I'll take that one to the heart. We we did that. We definitely did that. We both did that. That's all, that's all I can say right there. But this next and last one, yeah, because you're going to have to be mad over there, and I'm going to be mad over here, and we're going to be in the same house. Maybe not in the same room, but we definitely going to be in the same house. Mad as all get out. We're going to come and talk. We're going to have a come to Jesus meeting and talk about whatever it is. And if we got to go in our separate corners after the fact, then let's do that. However, comma, yeah, to the end, because I can't, we can't, and he better not, because I'm not. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> so, so, so you're looking for love. You want love to find you. You're good with love. Yeah. I had somebody tell me because this was a phrase that I use. I, I I I love love, and that's just that's just my phrase. It's my saying. I've heard. I think somebody else has said it maybe before, but I'm saying it because I say it. But I love love. I really, 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 really do. And I'm not um the quick to fall in I love, love type person. Like I I I <laughs> analyze and overanalyze and you what? I love lust. I but love, go ahead. You love lust. I love it. <laughs> Oh, she's honest, y'all. She's honest. So yeah, like I like over, I analyze, over analyze, thinking about it, think about it maybe two or three, four more times to make sure and make sure that I'm right within myself and where I'm at. And I've come to the realization that I am absolutely okay with saying I love you because I love you, not just with the love of God. I love you with love of the woman, how the woman's supposed to love the man unconditionally, just like you want the man to love you unconditionally. So the things that I don't know about you, I still love that anyway. Want to know why? Because there's some shit about me you don't know, and I would hope that you would love it anyway. Because I'm going to have to overlook your flaws and pick and choose my battles and from what I could see from where I'm standing and from what I've heard and from what we've already experienced, I think I've picked and chose the right amount of battles. <laughs> When it comes to right. certain stuff in my life, you know what I'm saying? Because we, you know, there's all, right. not going to be a perfect person, you know what I'm saying? And that goes back to the whole mental health awareness thing when it, you know, when it uh, comes to men because we as women do have a tendency to hold them to a high regard. I mean, they're a man, for Christ's sake. Right. Yeah. You know, but at the same time, it's like, we know you're not perfect. No, you are not God. You're absolutely correct. However, comma, you are God like, which makes you God. And so many other senses. So I'm fine with that. I ain't tripping. What I don't understand, though, because like I said, I do love love. And waiting for love to find me, I don't know how that's going to I sit in a dark room all day. <laughs> I don't know how love going to find me in the dark room. I mean, I, it ain't pitch dark. I do turn the light on sometimes and leave the shade open or something because, you know, I got to get work done. But, yeah, I just, that's just what it is. So um, however it finds me. It'll find me well. I'll embrace it when it comes, and that'll be that. Other than that, I'm like, by the time I get to the end of this road, Jesus, because my clock, not my biological one, excuse me, but my clock, I'm waiting for Mr. Wright to show up. The time is running out. Time's running real slim, real slim, real, real slim. It's going to be hard for me to trust. That's all. It's going to be hard for me to trust. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to deal with not trusting. That's all. Yeah. No secrets. I don't want secrets. Well, I've had so many. No secrets, no um, divorce. Not the ones that I, I I don't. I'm I'm not looking for love. And you know what they say, love always finds you when you're not looking for it. And I've had that happen too. And I dealt with that, you know, for like three years. I dealt with that love that found me when I wasn't looking for it. And I will always question God, like, like this man literally fell from the sky and he was perfect initially, you know, he was perfect. Um, and, you know, being in the entertainment or the music and entertainment industries, 
they're hell by themselves, but combine two people that are in right. the, the same. Um, yeah, and that that's the match that <clears throat> I don't I don't understand that how like celebrities I don't I don't understand that how they do it. I mean, unless they're always together, like I do see Cardi and Offset, you know, traveling a lot together. They've done so much to make their marriage work. You know, B and J, they've gone through so much and they do so much. Alicia and Common, you know what I'm saying? They've gone through so much. Dare I bring up Dwayne and Gabrielle? I, I see why their marriage worked. But, um, you know, me personally, it just it didn't work for me. Like, I felt like... um. I've always had men who put things ahead of me, you know, like um, okay. um, my ex-husband, you know, his family was, was always ahead of me. You know, the Bible says that when you marry, you know, a woman, this was a plea to that woman, you know, like God mm. comes first, your woman, your wife, you know, and then, then your family, you don't put nothing ahead of her other than God, you know, and so I set second. To, like I was, you know, his family. Then the next dude, like I said, second to his insecurities. You know what I mean? He, his insecurities uh, outweigh my insecurities. Ass, You know? Why well, would you get the, the insecurities at the beginning was, of this thing? Was, sorry, the military. You know what I'm saying? I always, I've always been somebody's mistress. In in my own relationship, I've been a mistress to, you know, um, their job, to their feelings, to their family. You know what I'm saying? And so. That's when you hear me talk about, and, and I, I mentioned it in that little description, like the parents dead. I swear, I asked them, where your mom and daddy at? Yeah. Oh, they're deceased. Oh, praise God. I mean, I'm so sorry, you know, because that's, that's <laughs> can't. something that I don't have to deal with. You, know, I don't have to deal with your parents peeking in from the outside. You know what I mean? So that's just me personally. But my, I have built up walls, you know, that are like, nothing can penetrate these walls. I mean, I have to be the one to tear these down, you know, and I actually let my guard down and let the walls slip, you know, just a little bit last year Mm -hmm. and thought that I was head over heels with somebody and thought, you know, oh my God, this is like, uh, and you know what the funny thing is? And I say, we talk about this a lot, but, um, and people, they don't get it when I say this, but a blessing to me, um, Living with a TBI is the fact that um, I don't remember a lot, and right. you know, it. Some days it it's bad for me when I see that my memory loss appears to be getting worse. Um, right. Some days, you know, it's it's good. Like I live by the sticky notes. You know, I got the sticky notes everywhere in my house. They everywhere in my house, my vehicle. They're everywhere because if I don't stick the sticky notes in my truck. I'll drive around for hours. Let me tell you something that was so scary. I went to the bank Monday. You I saw that. Yes, yeah. I went to the bank, and I needed a cashier's check. And the guy was like, all right, so what do you want a memo line? And I was like, all right. He's like, write it down. So I wrote it down. And then I, I looked at the paper like, this this is not right. Mm-mm. I texted my daughter. And I was like, what is our address? And she was like, right. no. She didn't respond to me quick enough. So I checked yeah. my son. He was asleep. So luckily, you know, the bank keeps all that information anyway or your account. Because you're like, right oh, there. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what's the address? So he, he gave me the address. And I was like, yeah, look on that piece of paper. He was like, yeah, no, you don't, you know, I have the street, but the, the house number? Oh, my gosh. No. He was like, yeah, no, you don't, no, no. you don't live That's there. And I was like, yeah, let me, I need, give me. <laughs> He brought the paper up, and I was like, nah, give me that paper, because I, I need to take this to my doctor. Like, he, he crossed through the, you know, put his little initials, whatever. I was like, I need to take this to my um, neurologist, you know, just to right. let them see. But I made a statement to my mother, you know, like, I didn't, I felt like one day I was just having, we were talking about something. Oh, I was supposed to be making um, travel arrangements for her going back to Nicaragua, and I forgot to do it. Like two weeks had passed, and she was like, "Have you done it yet?" And I was like, "Oh my gosh, you know, no." And the flight was gonna cost her a whole lot of money unless yeah, I it was. nigger and did, and did some things, you know, did my special thing right. to get it, you know, where it needed to be. But it got so overwhelming. Something that I could have done last year now was overwhelming. Like I couldn't. The numbers, 
everything was just, and I just broke down and started crying. And she's like, what? what? Okay, you know what? I'll do it. Don't worry. You know, I'll do it. Right. Like, don't, don't worry, worry about it. I got it. Travel like, agent, no, you know what I'm saying? I'll get another travel agent to do it. I'll get it done. And I was like, you know, no, that's not even it. Like, I, my, my memory, I just, I can't. And she made yeah. this statement to me. She said, you know what? Sometimes um, people, they, you always have to be mindful of what you pray for. Yeah. Always. Mm. You have to be very specific. You have to be right. specific with your prayer, too. All right? Don't be talking right. about send me a good man. Okay? Come on. I, I need you to be very specific with that. Because you're going to be happy that if you get that and ain't got no you. teeth. There you go. And you his feet I mean? stink. He could be the greatest man, bro. <laughs> you know, with bad teeth, receding hairline. Come on. Be specific. You, this is your one. You know what I mean? Be specific. Yes. Talk to God like that's your right. homeboy. Tell him what you want and then wait on it. All right? So I don't know at what point this would have happened. But she says maybe, you know, you've dealt with so much in your life and you've dealt with so much trauma. Some things, and you, and you work with so many people. Right. From, from rape crisis to domestic violence, to human trafficking, to suicide prevention, to homelessness. You work with so many people that pour right. so much of themselves onto you. And then you deal right. with everything that you deal with. Sometimes right. when you pray a lot. for things, God will give you just what you you want. It may not be what you need, okay, but he'll give you what you want. Then he'll also give you what you need. It may not be what you want, but he'll give you what right. you need. And so at <laughs> some point, you ask him to take some things away from you. Yeah. And so in order yeah. for that to happen, he has to replace those things right. with other, you know, things that are going to bring you peace. And things are gonna bring you joy. Right. right. That's hard to swallow, ain't it? Yeah. And things that are gonna bring you happiness. There's there's a meme right. that's going around that you you can't you can't prosper as long as you continue doing and dwelling in the same place that you've always been. Exactly. Thought. That continue to stay in your mind and in your memory, they're not gonna, they're holding you back from being where yeah. it is that He wants you to be. And so I feel like that's how it is with love, you know? He's, because I have one side of me that actually wants it, but then I've been a hard ass mm-hmm. all my life, you know? Oh, yeah. I've had a heart of, uh, of, of ice. I've been so cold all my life that that's what I'm accustomed to. You know what I'm saying? But then he's taken that away. Because I'm losing my damn memory. And I swear, to me, it's like I'm losing my mind, you know? But I said all that to say um, I've dealt with so many men that have just been wrong. They haven't been the one. And that leads me into another brand new song. <laughs> This is it right here, released on I love um, it. Thursday. Bless the Lord. On Thursday. Okay. He sent this right before the show, and he was like, yo, can we get this in? And I'm like, probably not, but I'll play it on Saturday. And here it is, not the one. Not the one. I've been racing heartbreak with pure hesitation on you. Lately, daily, I question my expectations for you. Are you willing to sacrifice your own feelings? Delay what your happiness is protecting what you ain't missing, are you? I spent so much time back and forth in my mind about you. It's to the point where I don't know what to do. Can't get my mind off of you. And though you don't have a clue. I want you to I need you to Tell me Believe that you're not the one 
people if it's really worth it Weighing my options, it may not be better if we started talking Distorting my vision, still seeing the signs but it ain't my decision Can I let you go? If I'll never know Try to be loyal, but one little spark made us harder and loyal Don't know what I'm in for, I can't dialogue you so who do I live for? I you to tell me Oh my gosh, I like that. Not as much as I like, I like Young, that. but I really, I like that. <laughs> yes. He is, really? you have to listen to the show with him. He is about, and I say, it seems like each interview is getting better and better this year. Everybody's going to be in the best interview category for um, the third annual Indie Fire Radio Awards show, I swear, because each interview just keeps getting better and better. But his interview was, um, he he was raised by his mother after his father passed away and his two sisters. And mm-hmm. um, so he has, he knows all about, you know, that side of a woman. So he writes a lot of his songs um, purposely for women and women that deal with insecurities. And, you know, he, he just, um, it was a great interview. You got to go listen to it. Susie, I've had an amazing okay. time with you this evening. I know I, I really did too. Like these two hours went by really fast. I think we need to bring this back on Saturdays. We do. We need to bring this back. Huh? What? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. What? We you need bring to bring back? this back on Saturdays. Yes. We need to run it again. We need to run it again. We need to we most I had an interruption in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I ain't got a problem with it. Sorry, I don't I'm okay. to get emotional, but it happens when I'm on like my third. It happens, wine, you know. When no, I'm, I'm on my saying. third glass, it was the wine. It was the spirit. <laughs> it was the spirit. It was the spirit. I got to add more glass, and I would be done with this bottle here. You know, yeah. So, no, I support support Susie and I when we start our wine business, okay? Because we we consume yeah, for real. too much wine not to be selling it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you know, it's coming. It's coming. Gotta really make sure we have some good Greek wine because I need some dessert wine, like for real. No dessert, just the dessert wine. You can keep the dessert. Oh, yeah. I just want the dessert, dessert wine. wine. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, mm, you can drink mm, the dessert. This is your sauce. You know. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> I real. think you got I need any shout outs for anything. Tell me what's going oh. on over there at Saving Sexy Radio. And so I can't. I remember, I'm so late. I, you know, I don't remember. I don't remember oh. how we met. Um, um, yeah, because you, uh, Nisha, shout out to was, Nisha, was Queen of the Steam, she was on State of Sexy Radio, yeah, because she, she, uh, set the interview up between you and I for my book, for Constance Chronicles, um, oh. so yeah, oh, yeah, she I did never that. Get over there right there. Yeah. I ain't never get yeah, over there, I remember that, <laughs> <laughs> you did, yeah, so yeah. Shout out to and we've been, yes, we've been here yes. ever since, we've been here yeah. ever since, you and I've been here ever since, um, but I, so I, there's been a lot going on, you know, Ooh. Ooh. wait, before I forget, Cause we, you know, your your memory a little shorter than mine, but I um um hell, see what I'm saying? Oh, I got a part in this in this movie, right? In this indie movie, and I forgot I didn't know. I, I had my test script for like two weeks, 
And I finally emailed emailed the uh, writer before a week a week and a half before we were supposed to go and film. And I was like, hey, so the script I got is this the test script or is this the one I'm supposed to be? Is this a script? Script? She was like, that's a script. Oh, I'm like, oh hell, I'm sitting up here programming, right? Because I'm learning programming, which is taking up my saving sexy radio time. So I was hoping to have that show up and running last week, and it didn't happen. Or yesterday. No, Thursday, and it didn't happen um, because I've been so swamped with programming. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. But, yeah, I have a, a role that I'll be in, speaking of mental health, men and their mental health, because my husband in the play, he got issues a little bit. So I think that's kind of hilarious. Not not ha-ha. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is ironic. We were talking right. about it tonight is what right. I mean. The irony. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. But, uh. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So I have that getting ready to happen as soon as we get a new date for it. She's looking for one other cast member. There's a male. I think we need a therapist. So, but they have to be local because I got to come into town to do the filming in Tampa, Florida, because they have to be in of or near Tampa in order to be a part of the production because it's filming, you know. So, um, but yeah, so that's going on. I'm excited about that. And um, I have a new guest coming on Saving Sex and Radio next week. I have, I definitely make sure our interview will be up and going, and that's Miss Optimism. You can find her on on Instagram anywhere. Replace all the S's with Z's, and she's pretty cool like that. But, um, yeah, that's it. Other than that, I don't have any dates to mention anything else at this current moment. But that's all I got. Okay. That's all I got. see. So I said that I would post, you know, all the, uh, I mean, I would say all the artists, their Instagram accounts. Well, yes, you did. I didn't get those. They didn't give those all to me. So, and off the top of my head, I'm trying to remember them and that's not going to really help you out at all. So if you follow me on Facebook, I will post them. I, I know Sitch is Sitch official. That's S-I-T-C-H official. Um, Jew Major is J U underscore underscore major. Um and that's 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 all I know. I think T V is T V music. So yes. Yeah. No. T Lee Music five zero four is T V. Um and let's see. Is it J the finest? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know what his is. New Wave is mogul is M dot M underscore E N T. All right. And then Way On is um didn't come up. I don't know. But I wanna say it's the real Way On. I know anyway, she's gonna post it. She all you're good at doing that. I was right. It is the it's real the way real. on. Way on okay. W A Y O N. All right. So, um, thank you guys for joining us this evening for this very special show, the anti Valentine's Day edition <laughs> of Indie Fire. Make sure that you tune in right back here on Monday at six thirty PM Eastern time Eastern Standard Time for New Music Monday and we will have um Caribbean artist Tahisi here out of New York. On Tuesday the eighteenth, we'll have um Jakiria Monique from J our Couture out of um, Florida. She'll be here Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then on Thursday the 20th, uh, singer-songwriter Chris Aaron will be here at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And Chris is in Orlando, Florida. See? You got to remember all this shit about these people. It's a lot. I'm trying to tell you. Who are you telling? Make it all be, please, please, please. Please do not miss them all. Leaving us tonight, this is Nine. Nine comes to us by way of New Jersey Station in South Korea. If you remember, we had him on the show earlier this month. No, last month. No, yes. He was here on the 1st of February. (laughs) Yes. So this is brand new. I'm talking brand new. It ain't been released yet. I don't even know if he's going to release it. Um, We have... um, Part of it, exclusivity. Uh, 
we will get it in its entirety as soon as it is on his new project that is coming out. Because I'm, you know, I critique music. I listen to music all day long. So I'm like, you know, there's, there's, it's too short. There's like a verse missing. Like you need another verse. And he was like, yeah, the next verse would be on the finish. And I, I just wanted to get this to you so you would have it for the show. Look at him looking out. Ah. That's all right. So this right here That's is right. table service. Y'all know what that means, right? When you're giving that table service, oh. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's I'm thinking bank. about spoon and mashed potatoes. No. I'm I mean, We can spoon afterwards. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Spooning out. Go. This is table service <laughs> by nine. Have a good night. Peace. About the fucking flag. Uh. I'm only here for a week, but I'm trying to get you a week. Let me introduce you to my table service. Yeah. Baby, I don't want to leave you, but I got to leave you. Table service. Yeah. My table service. Uh. Compliments to my table service. Compliments to my table service. My table service. Uh. Baby girl, I don't care what you've been through Girl, we ain't got the time now Penny to the side now I don't wanna hear about your issues All I'm trying to do is vibe now Mind in the sky now Baby, let me ease your mind When I say one time, you say two time Lights off, baby girl, just whine Just keep your body close to mine Baby, I can tell you are the best I can tell you different from the rest I can tell that life be hitting hard But I can tell you stronger nonetheless I can see that you've been feeling stressed I'm just trying to give you more than sex Let me take you out that state of mind Let me put you in a brand new dress Turn the lights so baby, watch my dread Screaming through the night the way I hit Baby, this is more than just a session We can fuck around and make it hit Screaming to the world who want that pressure I'ma fuck around and make it lit Spread your legs and let me get a lick Do a show before I catch a lick Yeah, I don't wanna waste no time Turn the lights off, let me hit it from behind Smack you in the ass while you're screaming, this mine I can see your stress, I can see it in your eyes I don't play games, all them other niggas lying Catch one of your angles, girl, you know you're looking fine Sipping on some wine when you hit a little wine I don't waste time, I'm just trying to cross the line I'm just trying to make you mine, uh I'm only here for a week, but I'm trying to get you a week. Let me introduce you to my table service. Baby, I don't want to leave you, but I got to leave you. Table service. Yeah. <laughs> my table service. Yeah. Uh, compliments to my table service. Uh, my table service.